from the MVG Production Studios. It's everybody's game of strategy, knowledge, and fun. It's Tic Tac Toe! And now, here's everyone's favorite Brandon Scruggs. It's Brandon Scruggs! Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. And hello once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in to another edition of Tic Tac Toe right here at MVG Productions. Glad you could be here with us as we are inching ever so closer to the end of our regular season and we wait for our Tournament of Champions, which the top four will be playing in our tournament. And right now we have our champion who, well, has been is trying his best to get into that top four position. We'll see if he can do it today as he takes on his first opponent. So, Richard, let's introduce, well, yourself and your opponent for today's game. I am your champion. And I've won three games in a row with $106,250. I'm a physical education teacher from Smyrna, Tennessee. Me, me, Nerd Ferguson. And my next opponent is an inner gluteal cleft cleansing specialist for delightful derrieres from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Please meet Scott Michaels. Thank you so much. And Richard, welcome back. It is fantastic being here. Imagine so. And uh, again, $106,250 so far here. You run as champion. And according to my records here, you are currently on the outside looking in on the uh, tournament champions here. You think you got at least another win or two in you to try to get you into the, our, t our tournament at the end? Well, I'm going to say this. I, I'm going to do my very best uh, tonight, and let's see if I can wipe my competition away. Well, we shall see if we can do that as we meet your opponent now, Mr. Scott Michaels. Welcome back. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Scott. Um, again, from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And what is this I hear about you working for Delightful Derriers? Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say, is this is, is this a new job? Is this a new uh, uh, job position for you, where you're really cleaning up on life now? Oh, I don't even know how to title of a job. Well, um, uh, the, well delightful well, dairy years. <laughs> wait, yes, you're an intergluteal cleft cleansing specialist. You know your company slogan is, "I'll get you in the first swipe, and it'll be to your dairy years delight." <laughs> Ah, ah so are you guys for the same company that makes Wipe That Tush? Ah, yes, that that that's the sister company. Gotcha. Coming to, MV, to, coming to MVG Productions, I don't know when. Got you. Okay. Like I said, they they do make a they do make a very nice um bathroom wipe there. So glad to see you're with a good company. Does that include extra benefits? Do you get to use three ply toilet paper as part of your benefits package? Well, I can take it home with me, but we have that toilet paper that feels like sandpaper when we have to use it. Oh, so they, so you still get this crappy stuff that we most most of us get at work too. So, yeah, just kind of smuggle in some rolls here and there for myself. Understandable. I mean, you, you got to keep it. You got to keep it soft. Got to keep it clean. You got to do whatever it can. But hopefully, you're ready to play the game. Yeah, I'm ready. That is for sure. Well, then let's get to it, and let's play some tic-tac-toe, shall we? All right, you guys know the, how the game works. Simply put three X's or three O's on the board, either across, up and down, or diagonally. Wins you the game, gets you the cash in the pot, and a chance to take down Fluffy for up to $100,000. So with that said, let's take, and I actually, before we reveal the categories, I should say here this is a special episode of um, tic-tac-toe tonight as we as we're going to go dancing through the decades here, as all of our questions have been categorized with uh, different themes in mind, you'll see as I'm talking about here, along with a couple of our regular ones here. So let's get started with our first game in these nine subjects, as they are the following. Deal with baby boomers, the top 10, Generation X, Millennials, Generation Z, the secret category, the United States, jump in category, and finally, multiple choice. Of course, uh, we'll talk about all those red categories should they get picked in our game. And we'll go ahead and get the action started here with our champion, Richard, making the first selection. Well, I want to try to start this off right and go with Gen Z in the middle. 
Gen Z in the middle is a, a center box question worth $500. Of course, it's a two-parter. and You'll get some extra time to think about it. All right, in our Generation Z category, these are all questions dealing with people, places, and things and events that happened from during the Generation Z era, era, which they consider to be 1997 to 2015. So, for um, for this uh, Generation Z question, we're dealing with music here. So here it is, two parter. First off, Richard, on the single "E.T.", which artist did Katy Perry collaborate with? Again, on the single "E.T.", which artist did Katy Perry collaborate with? That's the first one. And then the second one is, which Australian singer? Released the 2012 hit "Somebody That I Used to Know." Again, which Australian singer released 2012 hit "Somebody That I Used to Know"? Those are your two questions. Here's some extra time to think about them. All right, Richard, which one would you like to answer first? I ain't going there because I don't think I know either one of them. So you can start from the first one. All right. On the single E.T., which artist did Katy Perry collaborate with? Um, <laughs> Marshmallow. No, I'm sorry. It's not Marshmallow. <laughs> Wish it was. That would have been a cool like electronic funk mix on that one, but no. Uh, for the single E.T., uh-huh. which is for Extraterrestrial, that one, who I feel like fits the description, Kanye West. Kanye West was the artist there, and the second one, the singer that uh, had the hit song, Somebody That I Used to Know, that was Goite. Goite. So, can't give you that one. So, the board remains empty, and we'll now give it a nice little shuffle. All right, and Scott, we're over to you. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to try to steal a little page from Richard over there, multiple choice. All right, well, multiple choice in the center box. Again, another two-part question. Of course, you'll have a little extra time to think about it. Here comes your two-part question. Uh, here comes your two-part question under multiple choice. First off, sir, um, the word alibi comes from the Latin word that means what? Again, the word, uh, the word alibi comes from the Latin word meaning what? Is it lie, dark drink, or elsewhere? That's the first one. The second one is, Michigan is derived from an Indian word meaning large what? In Michigan is derived from an Indian word meaning large what? Is it lake, land, or island? Those are your two questions. Here's some time to think about them. <laughs> All right, which one do you want to answer first? Um, let's go with the first question. Sure. Alibi comes from the Latin word that means what? Is it lie, dark drink, or elsewhere? That's elsewhere. Elsewhere is correct. And now for the center box and $500. Michigan is derived from the Indian word meaning large what? Is it lake, land, or island? Can I, I'm going to guess lake. And that is a correct answer. You got the center box. Ooh. Ooh. Very nicely done. We put an O on the board there. We have $500 now in the pot. And let's shuffle the categories. Richard, we're back to you. Uh, let's go United States in the lower right. All right. U.S. question here in the lower right-hand corner. Here comes your question here. All right. From 1995 to 2000, George W. Bush was the governor of what state? Again, from 1995 to 2000, George W. Bush was the governor of what state? Was it Texas, Louisiana, or Florida? Texas. Texas is the correct answer. You got it. But next on the board there, 250 in the pot for the outside boxes there. So we're up to 750 now and another shuffle. And Scott, we're back to you. Um... I'll go United States as well. United States for you. Bottom middle here. Question under the U.S. is this. Which American novelist won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1962? 
Again, which American novelist won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1962? Was it John Updike, J.D. Salinger, or John Steinbeck? Stein Steinbeck. Steinbeck is the correct answer. Well done. Put a circle on the board there. $1,000 now in the pot. We shuffle the categories again. And Richard, over to you. Lord, um, I'm going to take a little measured risk here, and I'm going to go United States. All right, another United States question, top right-hand corner. Question here is this. In which city would you find restaurant Gary Danko? In which city would you find the restaurant Gary Danko? Would it be Los Angeles, New York, or San Francisco? I'm going to go San Francisco. And I'm going to go right answer. Put it next on the board there. $1,250 in the pot now. We shuffle again. All right. Scott. Oh, God. Yeah. I don't like any of these. So it's, a, it's, only, uh, it's only about a 40-minute show. So, yeah. So you got to pick let's something. Do, let's try Baby Boomers for the win. All right. Get this question correct. Under Baby Boomers, it is Tic Tac Doe, $1,500. And you become the new champion. Under the category of baby boomers, these are all of a uh, category dealing with events and things from the years 1946 to 1964. So here is the question. Scott, what company introduced the first indoor foam ball toy? Again, what company introduced the first indoor foam ball toy? For tic-tac-toe and $1,500, name them. I don't think they were around till then but my only thing coming to my head is nerf you have tic-tac-toe are you serious <laughs> yep for you it was, uh. for you it was either nerf or nothing in this case the nerf was a nerf and you won the game with fifteen hundred dollars you're going on to take fluffy in just a minute i didn't think they were around for the 60s yep nerf nerf has been around for quite some time and they they invented the first indoor foam ball toy there, and you got it right. And you're facing oh. off against Fluffy in a second. And Richard, I guess your time behind the contestants podium is through for now. But did you have fun playing while you did? I did. I'm ready to go, go oh, get back in my announcer booth. Well, I can understand that, sir. You're not leaving here empty-handed on this run. You take with you a nice chunk of change, which will be added to your paycheck, paid paid on a regular basis. To the tune of $106,250, sir. Now, thanks for playing. Thank you, thank you. All right, and Scott, $1,500 for you. You're the new champion, and that means you are going to face off against Fluffy in our bonus round. So come on over. All right, Scott, welcome to Bonus Land, sir. Your chance here to win a lot of money here if you can find, if you can avoid the dragon. Of course, you know nine numbers up there. We got tech, we got a tick, we got cash, and we, have, of course, have... Hi, Fluffy. Your objective, of course, is to get to $1,000 or find the tick of the tack before you run into the dragon. If you do, you're going to win yourself $50,000. However, if you can find the tick of the tack on your first two picks... We double that cash, and you walk away with $100,000. All right. Oh, boy. So a lot, a lot of money up for grabs here, and I'd like to see somebody else win the 100000 before we get to our tournament of champions. So let's make it happen now, shall we? Let's do it. All right. Shuffle the board. Fluffy, please go hide. We don't want to see you until after he's Bye, won Fluffy. some money. All right. Nine numbers are up there. You can get some help from the audience or pick them all yourselves. Up to you. I'm going to go with number one. Starting at the top of the charts, number one, we have $250. All right. Good start. You need $750 or tick and tack. Um, let's go right next door to number two. All right. Next door, number two, box two. What do we have? 300 more. All right. That's 550 there. Find the $500 space. That's an instant winner, sir. Well, going to take a little page from a 
turds tic tac toe, and also a little shout out for Nels, who's going through a lot. This is for you, buddy. Nels is chair number four. Yep, number four, as my announcer puts it in his series, the upside down sitting chair. Which why doesn't somebody just turn it back over already so somebody can actually sit down and enjoy it? But anyway, for the win, four. What do we have? Oh no! Oh. 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 Dang it, Fluffy got you again, sir. Sorry there. All right, uh, where was the rest of the board? Where was the tick of the tack hiding? Here we go. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Well, you, oh, you, you had to, yeah, you had to pull the old Mark Leota card there. You play the six and the nine together, and that would have given you the big <laughs> money on this one. But that's okay, sir. You're now the new champion. You've got yourself $1,500, and you're going to get a chance to try to take down another opponent and get back here for another chance at 100000 And we'll do that on the other side of the break here on Tic Tac Doe. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back to Tic Tac Doe with our new champion, Mr. Scott Michaels, now with $1,500. And unfortunately, bad luck with the Dragon. And hopefully, better luck here with the second game. Where you'll try to add to your winnings as you take on this next opponent. Richard, who do we have? Our next opponent is a prostate fluid correct collection director for Red Oak Banking Bank, who also helps unwilling people co host their shows from Red Oak, Texas. Please meet Jose Cazares. <laughs> really now? Okay. Uh, Jose, welcome back, sir. Uh, thank you for having me back. Yeah, so um, let me get this straight. You, you, you've decided to change uh, careers here. Instead of going for continuing with your degree f uh, toward teaching, if I remember from last time here, and now you are working for a colon collection agency? <laughs> Tell me more about this. Uh, so, uh, basically what I do is I now, I'm now a prostate examiner, hence why I'm known as the Red Oak Prostate Examiner. <laughs> Uh huh. And how? And how did? What led you down this career path? Uh, if I were to tell you what, if I were to tell you, we'd be here all night. <laughs> really? Too, too much. Too much to talk about. Uh huh. So you basically. So you're basically telling me it's like it kind of went in the wrong. Your, your career kind of went in the wrong direction, and now you, you you're taking you're taking the rubber glove approach to it. Is that correct? <laughs> If you want to put it that way, yeah. Right. So, I I would get into some of the details, but again, I don't not sure if the sponsors would want to continue to hear about this at this point. So, <laughs> I'm just gonna say I wish you the best of luck, and let's get right to it and play our game of Tic Tac Toe. We'll by looking at these nine subjects for this game as we continue our dance through the decades. We have the 1950s, the secret category, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, double or nothing, the 90s, take two, and the 2000s. Of course, now the, we're getting down specifically to the decades here for these categories. And, of course, there's the red categories. We'll talk about those when and if they come up in the game. So, with that said, Scott, you're the new champion. You get to select first. Where are we going? Okay. I'm not too confident in the 80s to go for it, so I'm going to go to the bottom right in the 2000s. One with the 2000s, bottom right-hand corner here. Here comes your first question in this game. What do you call an event in which people dance to music listened to on wireless headphones? Again, what do you call an event in which people dance to music listened to on wireless headphones? For the box, name it. An electronic rave? No, sorry, it's not an electronic grave. You're close. We call it a silent disco. Silent yeah. disco is what we're looking for there. So, can't give you that box. So let's move. Let's move the categories around. And how's that? Your first selection of the board. Uh, well, it didn't work out for didn't work out for Scott. Let's see if it works out for me. Let's try two thousand. Two thousand there, left side of the board. Here comes your question, sir. Uh, in which state? Does the TV comedy series The Office take place? Again, in what state does the TV comedy series The Office take place? For the box, wow. name the state. I've only seen a few episodes of that. Um, 
I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a shot here and say New York State. No, I'm sorry, it's not New York State. You're very close. It's right next door, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is where the, it ah, takes place. So dang it, can't give you that one. So we shovel the categories again. Scott, back to you. That question was the one I needed. <laughs> um, let's go for the 2000s again. Third time in the category, hoping it works out here for under the 2000s, sir. Let's try this. Which actor took over the role of Inspector Clouseau from the late Peter Sellers in the 2006 reboot of the Pink Panther films? Again, which actor took over the role as Inspector Clouseau from the late Peter Sellers in the 2006 reboot of the Pink Panther films? For the box, name the actor. I can see him. Um, oh, uh, uh. Steve Martin. Steve Martin is the correct answer. You got it. Well I, was done. Thinking of, I was thinking of the first one for so long it wouldn't come to head. Well, at least you got it in time. There, so well done. Put an X on the board there. We have $250 now in the pot. Let's shuffle the categories. <laughs> and we're back to you, Jose. Uh... I'm going to try it again, 2000s. All right, they like, they. I found a category that they seem to both like here, so we're going to just play <laughs> through it, it seems like. Here comes the next question from the 2000s here. Jose, it's for you. Which pop rock band featured the number one hit, Makes Me Wonder, on their second studio album, It Won't Be Soon Before Long? Again, which pop rock band featured the number one hit, Makes Me Wonder, on their second studio album, It Won't Be Soon Before Long? For the box, name the band. Oh, 2000s music. Uh, it's not my strong suit. Um, I'm probably way off on this one, but just because I want to take a guess, I'll say Aerosmith. I have no idea. No, I'm sorry. It's not Aerosmith. Ah. It's, actually, it's actually one of the ones that I like doing at karaoke for a good warm-up, and plus the crowd seems to like it very much. It's a mix... Makes me wonder by Maroon Five. Maroon Five is the band there. So, we're oh. for it. so, so can't give you that one there. So we remain again at two hundred fifty dollars in the pot, and we shuffle categories again. So, all right, Scott, where to? Ooh, let's try the secret category. All right, going with the secret category at the bottom of the board. Of course, our secret category could be about anything at all. Get this question correct, we double all the cash in the pot to $500. What do the initials G.I. and the G.I. Joe range of toys stand for? And what do the initials G.I. and the G.I. Joe range of toys stand? Does it mean, is it A, government intelligence, B, government indivisible, or C, or C government issue? That is government issue. And that is a correct answer. You got it. Put an X on the board there. We double the pot to $500, and now we shuffle once again. Jose, over to you. Oh, boy. Uh, I've got no choice. I have to go the 2000s to block. All right, center box question. Of course, two-parter. You'll get some extra time to think about it. Here comes your, your two-part question under the 2000s. The first one is this. Halle Berry became the first black actress to win Oscar for Best Actress in her role in what movie? Again, Halle Berry became the first black actress to win Oscar for Best Actress in her role in what movie? First, I need you to name the movie, and second, I need you to name the year that movie was released. That's your two-part question. Here's your extra time to think about it. <laughs> All right, Jose, once again, Halle Berry became the first black actress to win an Oscar for Best Actress for her role in what movie? First off, name the movie. Second, name the year it was released. Uh, I could spend an eternity trying to figure it out and never get it. But I'll take a shot at the year and say 2006. And no, I'm sorry, that is incorrect there. 
Uh, we were looking for the movie. The name of the movie itself was Monsters Ball, and the, it, it came one. out in 2001. 2001, we're looking for there. So, can't give you that box there. So, we remain with $500 in the pot. We shuffle once again. <laughs> Scott, over to you. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, no. 2000s for the win. I should have just renamed this the 2000s trivia at this point. But nonetheless, um, <laughs> center box for you, another two parter. Get this one correct, and it'll be tic tac toe, $1,000, and you'll get another crack at Fluffy here in just a moment. Here comes your two-part question. First off, all right, I'm going to give you a series of events. You tell me what year all these events occurred. Again, we're dealing with the 2000s here, so anything from 2000 to 2009. Actually, 2010, excuse me on this one. All right, first off, name the year. Jennifer Aniston files for divorce from Brad Pitt. Guitar Hero is released on PlayStation 2. And Carrie Underwood wins season four of American Idol. What year did all those events occur? That's the first one. The second one is Beats headphones were the first product marketed by Beats Electronics, a company co-founded by which music producer and rapper? Those are your two questions. Take some time to think about them. <laughs> All right, Scott, which one would you like to answer first? I'm going to do the second one first. All right, second one. Beats headphones were the first product marketed by Beats Electronics, a company co-funded by which music producer and rapper? I want to say that's Dr. Dre. And I want to say that's the correct answer. But now for the center box, tic-tac-toe, and $1,000. What was the year that Jennifer Aniston filed for divorce from Brad Pitt? Guitar Hero was released on PlayStation 2. And Carrie Underwood won season four of American Idol. Between two, I'm going to guess 2005. Is that your final answer? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's the wrong game show. But you have Tic Tac Joe! Yay! <laughs> oh, my God. I'm a 05 or 06. I was like, what Hang it. Hero come out. Well done, sir. Congratulations to you. Another $1,000 for you, and you get another shot at Fluffy here in just a minute. Jose, um, sorry about what happened there and getting swept and all, but did you have fun at least, or at least enjoy the game? Uh, I tried, but I just... Movies, music, uh, those are two of my weakest categories then, that it just did not work out. I think this may be my worst performance that I've I've had so far this season, but I did the best I could. Scott just knew the 2000s better than I did. Yep, and that's what it came, that's what it sort of turned into here with the shuffle of the board. So it worked out for him. But hopefully uh, you enjoyed your time here. We thank you for playing, and we have of course some lovely parting gifts, and we'll have you back here in just a few minutes for our big dragon finder game. All right. All right, I'll be there. All right, give it up for Jose Cazares. And Scott, you picked up another thousand dollars there, brings you now up to twenty five hundred dollars more. Let's go tackle that dragon once again, see if you can win a hundred thousand. There we are, and another chance here for a hundred thousand dollars, Scott. Didn't quite work out last time, but hopefully. It works out a little better for you this time. So, if you're ready, let's just get right to it. Fluffy, go hide. And let's see if we can pick up a hundred grand on this one. All right, I have my uh, girlfriend here with me this time. You care if I go to her for a number? That's fine by me. Seven. She says seven. All right, start in the lower corner. Seven. What do we have? Three hundred dollars. All right. Good start. You need 700 or tick attack. Keep, keep going. Eight. Number eight. Entering the dragon's cave, hoping he is not at home. Dra eight, what do we have? 50. All right, it's 450. You need 550 or tick attack. Number three. Up in the magical tree, in the branches of the tree, we find 250 more. 
All right, 700. You need 300 now or the tick and tack. Two boxes will do it for you. What do you think? Where do you think we should go? All right. Hopefully no lazy dragons. Number five. Number five in the center. Hopefully dragon has moved. Five gives us 100 more. All right. <laughs> Oh. Unless you find a tick or a tack, this is your last pick, sir. Keep going. One. One. Top of the charts. No dragon. Cash will give you the instant win. Nine one. Oh, oh no! Oh, 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 oh. And twice in a row, Fluffy beat takes down Scott, unfortunately. All right, let's look at the rest of the board. Where should... We we should have went anywhere else, but where was the tick attack hiding? Tick was behind two. Tack was behind number nine. Okay. So unfortunately, there, Scott, no win, but still twenty five hundred dollars to your credit now, as a two two time champion. And you looks like you'll be making it to our final episode of the regular season next time. But we'll see you then. But for now, we're going to take one more commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to have Richard take on Jose and a little Dragon Finder. See if one of them can pick up some additional winnings. And we'll do that on the other side of the break here on Tech Stay with us. Welcome back to Tic Tac Doe here. We're just about out of time for the episode, but before we go, time for a chance at a little bit of the old Dragon Finder game here to see if someone is capable of picking up some bit money from the dragon today as Jose takes on Richard in our Dragon Finder round. <laughs> Gentlemen, you know how this works. Nine numbers up on the board, one dragon. All you have to do is be the first one to find said dragon, and you win what's ever in the pot. How much is in the pot? Well, $10,000 for now if you can find it in the first pick. But every time you find a cash amount, we take that amount away from the winnings, and you only get whatever's left over at the end. You each get four picks of the board. If you go all eight picks and no one finds the dragon, Fluffy wins and will rule the day, at least on this episode. I'd rather not that happen. So. Let's get to it, and I wish you both best of luck. Fluffy, go high, because we're going to find you this time. All right, and Richard, you had you had more from the first round, so you're going to get, get the first pick. For $10,000, where's my dragon? Um, I'm going to go with uh, my likeness, and that'll be number eight. Number eight. So you're saying you're built like a snowman. Fair enough. For the big money, do we have it? No. I'm under there. Over to you, Jose. Uh, you know what? I don't think he moved from the last um, Beat the Dragon game. I'm going to go with one. One for $9,500. Is he behind the one? Nope. 500 more ah. now. Down to 9000 Richard, back to you. Oh, well, let's go with the other namesake of me, too. L the little deuce coop. Is he there behind the turd? <laughs> yes, he is! <laughs> Dang it. Congratulations, the deuce. Dropped the deuce and picked up $9,000 more in MVG bucks for your account. Congratulations. Show the rest of the board. Show where all the other amounts were. You found two of the smallest ones, so again, that's a nice chunk of change going to Richard there, and that is going to wrap up our episode, guys. Thank you so much for your continued support. Next time here on Tic Tac Dell, we're going to be wrapping up the regular season, and we will announce our players that will be competing in our Tournament of Champions, and we'll get to that uh, next time, but for in the meantime, between time, if you like Tic Tac Dell and want to see more of it, check out any of the first three seasons we've done here on the channel by checking out the playlists here. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. That way you never miss out on all the fun and games here at MVG Productions. And follow us on Twitter as well for all the latest information. In the meantime, between time, till we go and wrap up the regular season and the War of X's and O's wages on, I'm your host, Brandon Scruggs, saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time for more Tic-Tac-Toe. So long, everyone.
Business nerd Ferguson speaking for Tic Tac Doe. A Jack Berry and Dan Enright production. In association with MVG Productions.